Um, welcome to this webinar on circuit theory for electrical safety testing. My name is uh, Syed Abidi, and uh, I am the applications and new applications engineer here at Associate Research, and I will be presenting this webinar today. I think we have uh, around 30 participants at this time, and we're all set to begin. Before we get into uh, the material, uh, the host today is Jim Kenzie, and also joining us as a panelist for answering any questions is Pete Stevens. And as usual, if you if we do have a Q and A utility, so if you have any questions. Uh, uh, regarding the material being presented, uh, please feel free to uh, forward them. Uh, use our Q and A uh, utility to ask any questions. And uh, if you have any uh, technical issues, if you're unable to join or unable to hear the audio or look at the slides, please feel free to uh, contact Jim Kenzie at, at Jim K at ASResearch.com with any questions. Also, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available uh, for viewing tomorrow on our website. Okay, so a short uh, outline of what we will be covering today. Uh, we're gonna start with some common electrical prefixes and symbols, very important in terms of defining electricity and electrical parameters. Then we're going to get into the basics of electricity. We're going to try and understand what is electricity. Uh, we're going to give some examples, some analogies uh, to better understand uh, some electrical parameters. Um, then we're going to get into uh, some basic electrical components and basic electrical circuits. And uh, last and but not least, we're going to get into uh, some of the few, uh, three of the basic, uh, most common electrical safety tests, uh, the high pod test, ground bound, and the insulation resistant test. And we're going to look into the circuits for each of these tests. Okay, so first up, electrical symbols and prefixes. Uh, as we all know, electrical parameters are uh, uh, they all have their own units, and uh, we use uh, different symbols and prefixes to uh, further define those units, such as mega, which is which means uh, multiplied by a million mega ohms, for example, megawatts, uh, kilo, which means multiplied by thousand uh, kilovolts, as an example. Um, and then uh, milli, micro, and nano. Same way, we can use these as microamps. So these are very common uh, symbols that are very important to know in order to understand uh, and calculate electrical parameters, such as voltage, current, resistance, and power. Okay, so what is electricity and where does electricity come from? To understand this, we're gonna get into the basics uh, of uh, matter, which uh, the uh, most important partic uh, particles that, uh, that all matter consists and all matter is made up of is atoms. Atoms uh, are the basic particles of all matter, and uh, they consist of a nucleus, which is uh, composed of protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons. Uh, whereas electrons uh, in a nucleus, they orbit around the nucleus, and protons and electrons, they attract one another, just like uh, like charges repel each other. And an atom is normally electrically neutrally charged, meaning that it has the uh, equal amount of electrons and protons. 
and uh, an electric charge is caused by an excess or deficiency of electrons, meaning if there are fewer electrons, there will be an electrical charge. And electricity involves controlling of the flow of electrons. So basically, electric current is the flow of electrons. To uh, further un understand electricity and some of the basic electrical parameters, such as current voltage and resistance, we're going to um, go over a simple uh, example of water flowing through a pipe. Um, so this is a good analogy and a good way to understand these uh, basic electric, uh, electrical parameters. So the flow of electricity can be compared to the flow of water through a pipe, where voltage can be considered as analogous to pressure in a pipe. Uh, current can be considered the same as uh, the flow intensity of water in a pipe, and resistance can be uh, analogous to the pipe diameter. As you can see in the picture on the right, um, so what is voltage? Voltage, as uh, I said earlier, is analogous to water pressure. It is basically, if you compare it with this uh, diagram uh, with water flowing through a pipe, voltage is the force with which uh, the water is being pushed through this pipe. Same, uh, if you look at it, uh, voltage in an electric current, uh, it is the difference of potential across the material, meaning how much uh, force, uh, with how much force electrons are being pushed through a surface or a piece of wire. And voltage is all this reference between two points. Um, and it is basically it provides the energy for electricity to flow. It is measured in uh, volts. If you look on the picture on the right side, the one in the bottom, you can see that there's uh, a battery connected to a load through a piece of wire. Next. Uh, Another very important parameter in electricity is the current, which is analogous to the flow intensity. It is basically the flow of electrons, the rate of flow of electrons, and how many electrons are flowing. Compared to this pipe example where water flowing through a pipe, it's basically just like how much water is flowing through the pipe. It is measured, uh, current is measured in amperes, and if you see on the picture on the right, uh, you can see a battery connected to a load and the current flowing uh, through that load. Next, uh, what is resistance? Resistance, as the word describes, is the it restricts the flow of uh, current. Just compared to this uh, water example, where the diameter of the pipe uh, will, uh, if the bigger the diameter, the more water it will allow to flow through it. Same goes for resistance. If the resistance is uh, uh, smaller, it will allow um, more current to flow through it in any material. It is uh, resistance is measured in ohms. Insulators are is uh, are materials with a very high amount of resistance, mm, and a perfect insulator in this case would be an open circuit where there is infinite resistance and no flow of electric current. Whereas uh, conductors uh, are low resistance materials, and uh, such as a piece of wire that allow an easy flow of uh, electric current through them. And a perfect conductor in this case would be a short circuit with zero resistance, so all the current can flow through that surface. Next, what is power? 
to understand power, we can uh, go back to some of the basics uh, uh, in uh, of physics, where we uh, how we learn in college how a force can do the work to move a piece of block from point A to point B. In this case, uh, energy uh, will be the sum of the force required to move this block in the picture uh, to a, through a distance of 10 meters. And just like force is measured in newtons, power is basically the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. In this case, if you look at the picture on the right, um, there is a light bulb connected to a battery and the power be, is being absorbed by the light, bur light bulb. And the power that is being supplied by the uh, battery is uh, basically equal to the power being absorbed by the light bulb. And the units of power are watts. Power is basically calculated uh, as a sum of the voltage and the current. And uh, once again, power absorbed is uh, equal to power supplied. I'd like to remind you, if you have any questions uh, regarding the material, please feel free to use our Q&A facility. Uh, Okay, having said that, uh, what is the ground? Well, voltages are always referenced between two points, <clears throat> ground, common, uh, and earth ground. They're all different terms used to describe the low reference point of a voltage. Sometimes the ground can be tied uh, to the earth, such as a in a household electrical system, by means of a metal spike driven into the soil. Uh, and that's where the name earth ground comes from. It is all, earth ground is always assumed to be at zero volts. And uh, it can also be at another voltage other than zero volts, but is always considered the reference point to measure all other voltages in a circuit. If we refer to a point in the circuit that is at, for example, 24 volts, and this point is uh, going to be at a potential of 24 volts higher than the earth ground. So, and the symbol for earth ground is the uh, right here. It's a very commonly used symbol uh, in uh, electric circuits. Okay, so different voltage sources. Um, a voltage source basically provides uh, a voltage to a circuit. It can be either an AC source or a DC voltage source. And the return or the common point of the source is considered to is considered the ground, and uh, it may or may not be referenced to Earth depending on on the circuit. Uh, the symbol for DC source uh, is right here two different symbols widely used in, in in the electrical industry. And the symbol for an alternating current source is uh, right here, also very commonly used. Well, what is a DC current? DC current is basically the flow of charge that can change in magnitude but not in polarity, meaning that it can, uh, it will be in one polarity, either positive or negative. It won't be changing polarities. Compared to, an, uh, well, for example, a battery supplies the direct current. Compared to an alternating current where the flow of charge changes in polarity as well as in magnitude. For example, the sine wave uh, in the bottom representing a very nice uh, AC pulse. Uh, example of AC source is the common wall outlet that we use to power most of our uh, appliances. And uh, uh, and also with an AC 
AC pulse is associated with a frequency, which is basically the number of uh, cycles per second, uh, which is equal to one hertz, which is the common unit for frequency. Okay, having described uh, the basic uh, parameters of uh, electricity, we're now going to jump into some of the basic components used in uh, today's electrical circuits. Uh, the most basic of them are resistors. Again, as the name uh, defines, uh, resistors are components that are designed to introduce uh, op op opposition to current to, to current flow in a circuit. So basically, the opposed resistors are used to oppose the current flow in a circuit. And carbon is the, the principal substance used to uh, make these resistors. Uh, and the common unit used for resistance is ohms, as we saw earlier. Um, in this picture below, there are a few examples of different types of resistors that are used, uh, well, widely used, and the common, very common symbol for resistors uh, when used in an electric circuit. There's uh, different types of uh, resistors that can be found in the market. Some are surface mount, some are simple uh, resistors, some are variable resistors that allow you to change the resistance Based on based on the requirement, and uh, here's an example of a simple resistive circuit, uh, which is a simple circuit consisting of a source, a voltage source, and a resistor. And we can see that on the left side, uh, a simple resistor is connected to an AC source. And uh, the current uh, that flows when a resistor is connected to an AC source it could be bidirectional, meaning it can flow in either direction. Whereas compared to a DC source, uh, the voltage flow is uh, not bidirectional. Uh, the current flow is not uh, bidirectional. It will flow in one direction. Next. Uh, we're going to look at look at the Ohm's law, which is a very basic and common law that describes the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Um, as we can see, Ohm's law states that voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, which means the current basically varies directly with voltage. We can tweak this equation to uh, to find the current, which will be equal to voltage divided by the resistance, or to find the resistance, which is equal to voltage divided by the current. And we can see from these the relationships that current varies directly with voltage, whereas uh, current varies inversely with resistance, which also makes sense, because uh, the higher the resistance, the lesser the current flow. So. And the voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the current flowing to the resistor times its resistance. That's basically what uh, Ohm's law, definition of Ohm's law. Here's an example of how Ohm's law can be used to calculate uh, either voltage, resistance, or current. In this case, we have uh, a resistor of 10 ohms attached to a DC source uh, of uh, which is set at a thousand volts. So, in order to calculate the resulting current, we can use the Ohm's law, which is equal to uh, which says voltage equals to current times resistance, or we can tweak it to find the current, which will be equal to voltage divided by the resistance. So, in this case, the a thousand volts divided by ten ohms. So the current will come out to be 100 amps. So this is the current that will be flowing through this basic circuit if there is a voltage source of 1,000 volts present uh, connected to a 10-ohm resistor.
next uh, another uh, basic component of uh, uh, electrical circuits are capacitors very widely used in most electrical circuits and very important uh, components these are basically uh, energy storage elements um, they consist of two conductors separated by an insulator and uh, uh, since these are energy storage elements, capacitors, uh, they uh, get charged, and charging is accomplished by applying a voltage across the two plates of, uh, of the capacitors. On the picture, on the, in the picture on the right, we can see different types of capacitors, and the very important symbol for capacitors used in circuits uh, uh, widely in the industry. So once the uh, once the voltage is applied to the plates uh, across the plates of a capacitor, uh, once the capacitor gets fully charged, the the voltage uh, across the capacitor will eventually become equal to the supply voltage, which means the capacitor is fully charged, and it's full charge since the voltage and source will be at the same potential. There will be uh, uh, no current flow in that circuit and at full charge the current in the circuit will drop to zero. Capacitance uh, is measured in farads, a very common unit to measure capacitance. Once again I'd like to remind you all to please feel free to use our Q&A facility for any questions regarding this material. Well, having described uh, the basic uh, basics of electric current and electricity, basic components and basic parameters, we are, I think, now ready to jump into uh, some of the most common types of electrical safety tests that are required by various standards. Uh, um, we will only cover uh, three of these uh, tests starting with the dielectric withstand test, also known as the HIPOT test. Um, we will also cover earth bond test, which is also known as the ground bond test, and insulation resistance test, which is somewhat similar to the HIPOT test. Okay, so what is HIPOT test? HIPOT is a short for high potential testing or the dielectric withstand test. This test is uh, by far the most uh, common type of uh, safety test uh, performed uh, by electronic product manufacturers. This test is uh, basically designed to stress a product's insulation far beyond what it would encounter during normal use. And the assumption here is that uh, if the insulation of the product can withstand a much higher voltage for a given period of time, it will be able to function adequately at its normal voltage level for the life of the product. Hence, uh, the term voltage withstand test is used. Basically, how is the uh, iPod test uh, run? A high voltage is applied from the main input lines of the device under test to the chassis of the product for a specified length of time to check the integrity of the insulation of the, of the product by monitoring the resulting leakage current. And uh, the purpose of the HIPOD test is basically to check for excessive leakage current flow through a product's insulation. And like under any normal condition, any electrical device uh, will produce a minimal amount of leakage current due to the voltages and internal capacitance present within the product. But yet, uh, due to design flaws and other factors, the insulation in a product can break down, resulting in excessive uh, leakage current flow. Why is the Hypot test uh, used 
belt. It is, uh, of course, one of the most common safety tests. It is used as a design test during product development, also as a 100% production line test. Uh, it is used to basically um, detect workmanship defects in a product. And in addition to um, overstressing the insulation uh, during a high pod test, uh, this test can also be performed to detect uh, material and workmanship defects. Most importantly, uh, for example, the small gap spacings between current carrying conductors and earth ground. Um, when a product is basically operated under normal conditions, uh, environmental factors such as humidity, dirt, vibration, shock, and contaminants can close these small gaps and allow um, current to flow through them. This can create a shock hazard if the defects are not corrected at the factory. So uh, the high blood test is a very important test uh, to uncover these uh, uh, design uh, deficiencies and defects. Okay, once again, how does the high blood test work? Uh, we just uh, I just described how <coughs> leakage current spread in every product to some degree and it becomes a problem when it reaches uh, high values due to dielectric breakdown and what the high pot test basically does is applies high voltage to the mains input and monitors leakage current that flows as a result. Uh, now having described uh, AC current and DC current, uh, we have two different types of high pot tests as well. One is the AC high pod test, and the other is a DC high pod test. Voltage, uh, basically, um, there are a few advantages and disadvantages of both AC and DC high pod test. Voltage is uh, uh, one of the one of the few advantages of uh, AC high pod tests are that voltage can be applied instantly. So there's no need to ramp up. Uh, secondly, the item that's being tested does not have to be discharged. And AC high pod test, uh, by nature, since AC current uh, or AC voltage uh, is uh, flows both in uh, negative and positive polarities, so this tests both polarities simultaneously. Some of the disadvantages of AC high pot tests are that it measures total current, which is the sum of the reactive current due to the capacitive element in a in a in a device and the resistive uh, <clears throat> the real current, which is the uh, due to the resistive element in in the device under test. And AC high pot also requires a large uh, current capability to test capacitive loads. So these are a few disadvantages of, of AC high pod test. Um, some advantages of DC high pod test are that it measures real current and uh, the low output current capacity for capacitive loads makes uh, DC high pod test uh, relatively safer to run. Some disadvantages of uh, DC high pot test. Um, the voltage needs to be ramped up and the DUT, the device under test, needs to be discharged for safety reasons. And, and since we know that DC is only testing in one polarity, so uh, a DC high pot test will only stress the insulation of the product in one polarity at a time. Okay, um, now we're going to go into what is total and real current in a device under test. In uh, most devices have a resistive element, which is the insulation, and a capacitive element due to the applied voltage from a high pot test. When voltage is applied, um, a reactive imaginary current develops due to the capacitor. 
and a real current develops due to the resistance of the insulation. Um, readings are different depending on whether the applied voltage is uh, AC or DC, as we saw in the AC and DC advantages and disadvantages. Here's a basic uh, circuit uh, showing uh, um, the total current flowing in the circuit uh, as the sum of the real and capacitive current due to the capacitor and resistor. Sorry. Here we can see that uh, the basic circuit connected to a basic uh, device under test uh, connected to one of our uh, Omnia series uh, safety compliance equipment. Um, we can see there's a, <clears throat> this is performing a AC withstand test with a voltage of uh, 1.24 kilovolts and uh, it is measuring the total current and the real current. Here's another simple example of uh, how a basic, very basic high pod test is uh, performed uh, using a, a common household pedestrian fan. We can see here that this is the high voltage supply line that is supplying high voltage to the mains input of this DUT, which is in this case the fan, and the resulting leakage current is being measured by the return lead connected to a good chassis point on the product. Here's another uh, a little more detailed circuit how uh, a high pod test is uh, performed. And you can see here that this is basically a, showing us a pass condition. Um, and what, what a high pod test really does is that it creates a big capacitor, uh, having uh, so, uh, stressing the insulation with high voltage. Uh, what it does is it's uh, basically creating a big capacitor as it's uh, and this, in this picture, it's being rep represented by these two capacitors. And since this is a pass condition that we're showing, so there's uh, no excessive leakage. Here in this picture, uh, we are showing you a fail condition where we can see that there's some kind of breakdown in the insulation and there's the excessive leakage current as a result an excessive leakage current is uh, flowing through the on the surface of the DUT, which of course can be a big shock hazard and a safety issue. And this is basically the main purpose of running high pod tests is to is to make sure a product is uh, safe for the end user. Okay, having discuss the high pod test where the next the test that we are going to go over is the earth bond test. Um, it is uh, also known as, commonly known as ground bond test. Now what is the, what is earth bond test? Basically, ground bond test is, uh, um, it, can, it is used to determine whether the safety ground connection of a device under test can uh, adequately handle any fault current resulting from a dielectric breakdown. So basically, by simulating a failure condition and uh, circulating excessive uh, current through the DOT's ground connection, uh, the ground bond test basically helps to verify the integrity of the connection to earth ground. Now we just went over earth ground in a few slides back. So basically we're testing how good is the earth ground connection of a device under test. And in case a product installation fails, uh, 
this uh, low impedance ground connection uh, is uh, should be essential to ensure that uh, the lethal fault current that will flow to the ground and uh, it will not uh, flow through a person that comes in contact with the DUT's metal enclosures. So basically, in simple words, what the ground-bound test actually checks the safety ground circuit of the device under test, uh, if the and makes sure that the, it can uh, handle the fault currents if the installation of the DUT was to fail. In this picture, we can see a simple ground-bound test being uh, being run. And this uh, ground-bound test is also required by various standards, and uh, it is also one of the very important uh, electrical safety tests. Here's a simple uh, circuit describing uh, how a ground-bound test is uh, run. As you can see, the device under test, uh, the plug for the device under test is connected uh, to the tester, the ground-bound tester, and a high current is uh, supplied to the ground pin of uh, the DUT. And um, to, there are many different, uh, different uh, ways to detect the uh, resistance of the test lead. So here, in this case, uh, we are using uh, the Kelvin method uh, to monitor the induced voltage to a very low resistance connection. Um, this technique uh, basically uses a four probe system to eliminate the resistance of any test lead wire from the results. Um, basically, one set of leads applies the required current for the test, while the second set of leads measures the voltage drop across the DOT directly at that uh, contact point. So it, uh, this test basically gives you a measure of the re uh, how good the ground safety ground connection of a DOT is. Here's the another circuit. Uh, showing a, a failed situation uh, while running a ground-bound test, and uh, as a result of uh, uh, you know a product installation failing, uh, we can see here that it is detecting a failure through the return lead. Now, why is a ground-bound test used? It verifies once again if the ground car can be can handle dangerous fall currents for a specific period of time if the uh, product installation was to fail. Secondly, uh, this test is generally performed. The ground bound test is generally performed before the high pipe test. It is uh, also a design or type test. How does it work? Well, we just uh, saw a few examples. It uses uh, an AC current source. Well, um, it all, there are DC ground-bound test uh, requirements as well, so uh, it can be AC or DC, and not a voltage source to, uh, like the high pod test. Um, well, and it raises or lowers the voltage depending on the resistance of the device under test. Open circuit condition is where the uh, resistance is infinite and the voltage increases, and a short circuit condition is where the resistance goes to zero and the voltage decreases. And again, uh, we went over uh, how the Kelvin method is used uh, to measure the resistance. Okay, uh, here's another simple uh, example of how a ground-bound test is run. As we can see here, high current is supplied to the ground pin of the device under test, and uh, the integrity of the ground connection is measured via the return leads. So lastly, 
The third test that we are going to cover in this webinar is the insulation resistance test. What is the what is insulation resistance test? Basically, this test is used to provide uh, manufacturers with a quantifiable value for the resistance of the of their product insulation. Um, an insulation resistance tester, what it does is that it applies a DC voltage across the insulation of a product and measures the corresponding leakage current which is used to calculate the resistance of the insulation. So this test is similar to the HIPOD test in, in that it measures the, it supplies a relatively low uh, voltage to the insulation and stresses the insulation and uh, measures the leakage current as a result. But what it gives us is the resistance value of the insulation. Um, it is the uh, <clears throat> why is the insulation resistance test important? Where is it used? It's not a very common, commonly used test, but usually it is used in service and repairs, and it also verifies the product's integrity. Um, common applications include motors and cable harnesses. And like I said earlier, although this test is related to a HIPOD test, the insulation resistance test uh, provides more information about the device under test, which can be useful in uh, certain applications. Uh, also, the insulation resistance test is uh, sometimes called out by the safety agencies to be performed subsequent to the HIPOD test. And uh, insulation resistance tests are, like I said earlier, are always performed using a DC voltage. The reason being that due to the real and reactive uh, current components produced as a result of the uh, uh, device, of, uh, as a result of the DUT's dielectric, um, applying a DC voltage to the DUT negates the reactive uh, current component caused by the product's capacitance, and it allows the insulation resistance test to perform a true real current measurement. Again, uh, how does it work? Usually, it uh, performs uh, essentially as a dielectric withstand DC W test usually at 500 to 1,000 volts, and uh, again, uh, it displays a resistance measurement by dividing the voltage uh, applied by the leakage current produced. Um, and, it, and again, the basic Ohm's law is used to calculate the resistance. Uh, Okay, having uh, covered all this information, uh, we are pretty much done here. Uh, once again, I would like to remind you all that um, please uh, make full use of our Q&A facility and uh, forward any questions that you have regarding this material that was presented in this webinar. And if you would like to get a copy of this presentation, please feel free to send an email to jimk at asresearch.com. Uh, here's our other information. If, if, you, if you're looking for any other information uh, about our products. And at this time, I would like to leave uh, uh, some time open for questions. And also, I would like to thank you all for being patient and for joining us today for this very important webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, please feel free to forward any questions. So I had actually, there were a couple of really good questions that I think uh, would that I, I've actually already answered privately, but I do feel would benefit the rest of the attendees if uh, if you address them directly to everybody. Um, specifically, uh, they had to do with 
what the maximum current setting should be for a high pot test. So in other words, the max trip setting for a high pot test. Okay. Okay. Are these the uh, are these the uh Well, we uh, we have a question regarding the max uh, trip settings for uh, for a high pod test, and uh, basically it really depends upon uh, the what standard you're you know testing your product according to. So, uh, and also the usually it's usually the manufacturer that specifies. Uh, a high limit uh, trip value for the leakage current for a high pot test. Once again, I'd like to remind you all to please feel free to forward any questions uh, <clears throat> using our Q&A uh, facility. Okay, at this time it seems like uh, all questions have been addressed and uh, since there are no more questions, we are uh, going to sign off here. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to having you uh, join us uh, in the next series of webinars. Thank you very much. Have a good day.